Hello everybody, Chuck Ogler here. Now before I get to the topic of this video, I know I'm late on this topic. So to help the video, it would be greatly appreciated if you like and subscribe. Now to the actual topic of this video, Velma. We've all heard of it and I'm not going to spend too much time on it because it feels like beating a dead horse at this point. But Velma, uh, for you, those of you who don't know, is a the newest installment of the Scooby-Doo franchise, and it is awful. Now, for those of you who don't know, here's a little plot synopsis of it. Uh, Velma is Velma, who's the main character now, is trying to figure out the the murders, the murders of a bunch of kids that uh, happened at our school. Now, this plot is perfectly fine executed, but the way the creators executed it, I guess I should press, I guess I should preface, it is fine if it's executed correctly, but the way the creators executed it is terrible. Now, everybody Everybody in the show, to wrap all the problems in a neat little bow, every character feels off. Now, I'm not talking about, like, like something small. Everybody is just a completely new person. Now, I, I know from the way I'm saying this, I sound like I'm some Scooby-Doo mega fan. But no, no, I'm not. I have seen... I have seen an episode from every installment, though. Now, one of the one of the main issues a lot of people had with it is it's it's an it's an installment of the Scooby Doo franchise, so it shouldn't it have Scooby Doo? Well, it doesn't. But from what I've heard, now take this with a grain of salt because I didn't actually do any research into this. This is just what I've heard. Now, Scooby-Doo is going to be reintroduced, but no, not as a dog. As a human person, that's going to be dating Shaggy. Which, uh, also, Shaggy isn't Shaggy. He is Norville. And he's just not, he's just not the lovable idiot we once knew. Now, I would like to preface, I do not have any issue with the race chains. It's just the way they execute it. All the characters are off. Doesn't feel like Scooby-Doo. It feels like something Family Guy would make. Now, here is an installment of the Scooby-Doo series that, from what, from what I can see, Velma tried to recreate, but flopped, flopped at hard. Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated. It was created in the late 2000s by a couple of people at Hanna-Barbera. And they did an amazing job at it. Like, just a perfect job at it. Now, I'm not going to spoil the plot, but I'll give a short, short synopsis. So, the Mystery Incorporated gang, in the first episode, they do they do the usual uh, bad guy hunting. But in, in, in the cave they visit in the episode, they find a locket. And this guy named Mr. E has something to do with it and says, Hey, you shouldn't look into this. And they keep looking into it and he, he basically just gives up and says, Well, you know what, uh, my might as well help you with the mysteries. And he sends them letters uh, to help them solve the mysteries. And over, and over time, he eventually leads them to him. Now, I would like to puff this off from the way I'm making it sound. It sounds like it's just normal episodic Scooby-Doo. There's a mystery, we solve it. But the thing Mystery Incorporated does different is there's actually a story to it. There's an overarching story through all the episodes. Well, yes, it does have the classic, uh, there's a mystery and we've got to solve it. But in between, 
and like in between the cracks, in between the little, the actual story, uh, in between the mystery segments, there is a story about a, a, a different group of kids like them. Now, I'm not gonna say the entire thing, because I think you should go watch this, because it is amazing. Me, I'm actually on the, like, fourth or fifth watch through. Now, I may be looking at it through rose tinted glasses, but it is much better than Vela. For one, it actually feels like Scooby-Doo characters. Alright, now, I'm gonna do a little contrasting from the Velma series. In the Velma series, Fred, the leader of Mystery Incorporated, uh, in all of the Scooby-Doo adaptations, aside from this one, I'm not sure yet, well, Fred, in the in Velma, he's just a stereotypical little white guy, a cardboard cutout. Even more of a cardboard cutout than the stereotypes in the original uh, Scooby-Doo series. But in Mystery Incorporated, there's actually depth to him. Alright, there's actual depth to him. Uh, he has his own likes, personality traits, goals, dreams. And they execute it really good. Everybody feels like a different person. Now, they do that in the Velma series, but a, d a different person, right, from the actual Scooby-Doo cast. Right, for example, in the Mystery Incorporated, they still, they still are the characters from the original series, but in Velma, they're just different people entirely. And there's not really much I can mention about Mystery Incorporated. I've already covered its amazing story, how it does the characters better, and how the characters actually have depth. The only thing I can really say is that you should go watch it. Alright, there's actually an, a story to it. There is, and in the story, yes, there is mystery. Now, I would like to preface, before I end this, I, I wouldn't say to go so hard on Velma right now, because it's only on its second episode. Now, there, there is room for improvement. Do I think that's going to improve? No, not really. Could it? Possibly. There is a chance that it could improve over time. So, yeah, that's, that's been, uh, this has been Sarcography, and my message today is, go watch Mystery Incorporated instead of Velma. This has been Sarcography, I'm gonna try to post more frequently, uh, drink your water or else the water man will get you, and I am out. <laughs>